Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro which can be found in the bulletin.
accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings.
time when they were in Capernaum, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fast around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown to the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, number 594, God's own child I gladly say, 593.
mercy and peace be to you in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for meditation comes from our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, Jesus put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Thus far our reading. Now, sometimes when we talk about receiving the kingdom like a child, people take that to mean we should only think about the faith as a child, may conceive the faith. That is, people think we should have a childish faith instead of receiving the faith like the child. Although we desire to preach the gospel simply and intelligibly for everyone to hear, we still need to address the complexities of the faith. What are we to do if someone comes up to us and expresses concerns about our faith in view of science, history, and philosophy? We do wish to give an answer for the hope that is within us to anyone who has. Therefore, it is unwise to limit our articulation of Christ's salvation to childlike explanations. We should grow and mature in the faith by the direction of the Holy Spirit. And this means not just looking to how to explain things simply, but try to look to the beauty of God's creation and all that he has placed there in it, there in it for us to learn and experience. Of course, we can only know Christ by the gospel he has provided to us, but there is still much beauty in the world that we can learn from. So then, if we are to grow in the faith, and we are to understand Christ, well, then how are we supposed to understand what Christ says when he says, those who are greatest in the kingdom of heaven humble themselves like a child? Well, this is not about keeping things simplistic, as I just said, because not every situation calls for that. The reason for humbling ourselves like children is to be like a child in the reception of graces from their guardians. Little children, infants, are dependent on the care of their parents, and they receive food, clothing, and everything they need freely. Infants are not working to secure their place in the house, nor should they have cause to fear their parents. They can trust that their caregivers will give them exactly what they need. Sadly, this is not true for every household, since sin has crept into the world. But we are actually here talking about the kingdom of heaven where God the Father reigns, and our Heavenly Father is not a sinner. If we humble ourselves to the level of infants before God, then we see how much we rely on God for our care. We need His food, His clothing, His shelter, and His love to carry us through from day to day. What's more, we need to be able to rely on God for all this. We need to be able to trust Him. And we do have ample cause to trust. There is no need to fear God as if he will throw us out of the house because we are not smart enough or strong enough like the ancient Greeks used to do to some of their infants, leaving them for dead in the wilderness. Instead, God draws his children to himself because he desires to give them all that they need. He is the holy parent we have, which all earthly parents should be imitating. As children in God's heavenly kingdom, we are accepting great gifts he gives us in this world. He gives us not only food and drink, but the very mouths and stomachs that consume them. He gives us not only our clothing and shelter, but the bodies that inhabit them. And the greatest gift of all is eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. And just like we have not earned 
the food and clothing God has provided to the world, nor our very bodies and souls. The Lord has given us a secure place in heaven purely out of his fatherly divine love. Much as love is not, nor should be communicated to be, something earned by children from their parents, God's love comes to us before we have yet done anything. We are not waiting with bated breath at ultrasounds or DNA testing to see if an unborn child is worthy of being birthed into our families. We are to unconditionally love our children. They are a gift of God to us, and we receive them as infants who need our love. Even if the baby who is born is suffering disabilities or deformities or disadvantages, that is still your child in need of love. Need of them even more on account of any defects. And certainly we are defective before God. We are born as sinners, and in sin we were conceived. From the beginning, we were spiritually disfigured and deformed, being at war with God even in the womb, and needing his love and forgiveness. For we were born apart from faith in God, and apart from faith it is impossible to please God. Were God protective of his love, withholding it from us who were incapable of pleasing him, then we would all be lost, even now. But God showed his love to us when he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for our sins. To reconcile us back to our Heavenly Father by way of the cross, Jesus made us children of God. As those who are in desperate need of love, God amply provides his love at great sacrifice, in the greatest sacrifice. What is given to us is to simply receive the sacrifice of Christ offered. The love of God is unconditional. The love of God is offered in good faith. As long as we do not reject the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, then we are already possessors of it and have a place in the kingdom of heaven. Much as a parent brings their child into their home, we are brought into the household of God. A newborn infant can't waltz into a house and declare it as theirs. They need to be carried in with swaddling cloths, with a promise of care and proper nourishment that they may grow up in that house. And we are inheritors of heaven much as a child is an inheritor of their parents' house. That is, we are brought into it solely based on our parents' love. But much as children are not babies forever, as any em empty nesters can well attest, children go up. However, their needs don't really diminish along the way. These children still need nourishment, clothing, shelter. We still need nourishment, clothing, and shelter. Just because we have grown up does not mean we do not have our basic needs, and this includes our basic spiritual needs. At all times, in all places, we still need Christ and thirst for the milk of his gospel. We know that we succumb to temptation and need forgiveness. We know that we cannot stave off death, and we know we cannot bring ourselves into heavenly places. At all times and in all places, we need God at work within us, bringing us into eternal life and cleansing us from our sins. For those of us who have matured in the faith, being in the church long enough to grow and develop, we are able to do more now. We are infants and capable of taking care of ourselves. We can crap, pick open uh, the Bible on our own and read the scriptures. We can pray to God without aid. We can go out doing good works and spreading the gospel. You might even be capable of answering those tough questions that Christians get asked by non-believers. And all this is good and for the glory of God. But still, in all of this, no matter how much or how old we get, we still rely on the Lord giving us all things as a gift. 
We still resemble little children in this respect, for we will always need the love of our Lord guiding us unto eternal life. And in this way, we can think of how parents should act toward their kids in love. That is, the kids that are all grown up and have left the house. They're still your kids. Going out the door doesn't change that. You'll always be their parent, and they will always be your child. The unconditional love you have for them is still there, although you, the way you express that love for your child may change. You don't have to love them by changing their diapers anymore, but you may now have opportunities to share your love by offering advice, experience, or a helping hand every now and then. And one of the most precious gifts you can continue giving your children in love is the love that you receive in Christ. This is the greatest gift we continue to receive by grace from our Heavenly Father. So it makes sense that this will remain the greatest gift we have to offer. For while we can care for and sustain our children through earthly means here on earth, God can care and sustain his children in the spirit unto eternal life. So as the Father still loves you as his beloved child, caring for you by forgiving your sins and drawing you into eternal love and life, love your children by sharing the good news of forgiveness and life in Christ. Even if you don't have children, you can still share this good news with others in the hope that they too may receive God's fatherly care. For as of now, there are many who reject it, those who were once in the church and those who may not have ever been able to hear the good news of Christ. They are still brought into this world in need. They are still brought into this world relying on God even though they may reject Him. And this is the scary thing that we find in our readings from this morning, especially in Ezekiel, where we find that those who are remaining in their sins, are rejecting God's promises, that they're apart from God, and that if they remain in this, they remain outside of the Father's household, they remain outside the kingdom. But God's love does not stop for them. God's love continues for them in that he is still calling to them actively through the gospel. Even those who were once baptized but are now outside the faith. They were made God's children in baptism and the Lord still calls to them as his children. Just as if you have had a child which disowned you, that does not mean they are not still your child in some way. They may reject your help, they may reject the place you have for them in your household, but you still want them there with you. This is why God has called us to ministry here in this world, to call the lost, to call those who need to belong to the household of faith, who need to come into the kingdom. And this is why God has uniquely equipped you to do this. God has called you through the gospel, enlightened you with his gifts. He has given you the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where you received life and forgiveness in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in the Word and Water. We have Christ with us. We have his salvation. We have a secure place in the kingdom. And we can witness this to every last soul that we may see. And it remains our task to call those who are lost, to call those who are children, and even with our children, as they go out into the world, the world calling them to whichever way the world is blowing at the time. It remains our task to teach our children the gospel. For we have it, the world does not. We have Christ. The unbelieving world has not. This is true for at home, at school, and everywhere else. 
It is our mission to make disciples of all nations by baptizing them and teaching them all that Christ has taught us. This begins at home and this spreads out to the ends of the earth. So let us proclaim Christ and keep proclaiming Christ. We know that we, as children of God, need Christ and keep needing him. Therefore, let us keep receiving Christ as little children, not trying to earn his love, but always enjoying the life Christ offers as a free gift while showing his life and his love to all others. Amen. May the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise in prayer. And let us confess our faith using the words of the Nice. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. With the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, the God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has called us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father, and for those who have not yet heard the good news of Jesus Christ, that they may hear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and for all who have been set in positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. From those who have been afflicted from the wildfires here in BC and across the world that you may provide for them, give them what they need, 
place for his lust, and turn hearts to generous giving. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For those who are sick and infirm, especially, O Lord, we put before you Margaret, Gail, Jean, Bruce, Wilfred, Ruth, William, Rob, Judith, Lynn, Paul, Queen, Eve, Noah, Hans, Gloria, and Courtney, and all those we name in our hearts now. That God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, I have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength in this ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver our service, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in the offering. Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. 
grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the end to the earth, and celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast, the Lamb, and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, to shed for you for forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the world. For thy is the kingdom, and the power and the glory. Peace of Lord be with you always.
sewing group 1 p.m. You also have the Belly Voci vocal group at 3 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, Saturday we're beginning some new stuff so we have confirmation back up and running. Ooh, picture, yeah. uh, uh, immediately following that we're going to be having youth groups so uh, even if you haven't been made a part of uh, the confirmation class, you can still come out to youth group. This is going to be happening at 11 a.m. here at the church. Uh, also on Saturday, it's a busy day, so 1.30, worship committee meeting. So if you're in the worship committee, please come for that. And then uh, 3 p.m., chimes rehearsal. Okay. Uh, and next Sunday, we will be having a 9.15 Bible study. Uh, so this is evangelism apologetics so uh, please come out to that to try and make you more comfortable talking to people about your faith in our community and uh, after service next week congregation meeting big one uh, we are trying to determine where we should be moving forward as a congregation uh, but we're also going to be deciding other things such as uh, communion should we go back to the rails for distribution so please come out to give your say on that. Uh, looking a little bit further forward, Saturday, September 23rd, lecture seminar. So if you want, so if you're a lecturer or if you're interested in being a lecturer, like speaking from, uh, speaking the readings from the lecturer, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can uh, come out to the lecture seminar, September 23rd. But even if you're not necessarily interested in being a lecturer, if you want uh, to work on some public speaking, it would be a great chance for you to do that. Uh, oh, one thing that I forgot, next Sunday, September 17th, so Living Hope Christian Church, they're the group that rents our basement. They're having the first anniversary of their congregation next week. So they're also inviting us to join them with that so so uh if so when we're done with the congregation meeting then we can come and join them they'll be using the sanctuary we'll be going downstairs okay so now final thing today is rally day uh so hot dog barbecue uh i'm pretty sure there's also going to be the odd vegetable there as well so, so uh please join us for some food downstairs after the service are there any other announcements? Louise? It is Marilyn and... <laughs> Senior moment? Senior moment. Senior moment. Glenn, um, lost anniversary today. Okay. Yes, the, the seventh year of wedding anniversary. Yes. Thank you. Cool. Uh, actually, let's have a little brief prayer of thanksgiving for that, if you don't mind. Hmm? Could we also pray for the people of Morocco? The earthquake? Oh, I haven't heard about that. There's 2,000 people deceased in Morocco. Um, ah, there was a, okay. There was a all right, all right. Thank you. Uh, okay, so first prayer, thanksgiving for wedding anniversary. Uh, second prayer, uh, all those who are victims of the Morocco Reformation. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for bringing us, your children, into your church and giving us the grace therein. We thank you, O Lord, for securing for us a place in heaven. We thank you also, O Lord, for all the worldly blessings you give us, including the blessings of each other. Today, O Lord, we thank you for the seven-year wedding anniversary of the Monses that you have uh, reunited them in one flesh here in our church, in this church of Lutheran. And we ask you, O Lord, to continue guiding them all their lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We also ask you, O Lord, 
God of all creation, that you be with those who are suffering natural disasters in this world. Oh Lord, we ask you to be with all those who are suffering in the earthquake at Morocco, all those who are victims, who are afflicted, uh, that you may give them healing and health, that you guide all those who are in mourning to, to the hope of everlasting life in Christ and the promise therein. We ask you, O oh Lord, also to be with all the responders to this, all those who are working to uh, save those affected by this disaster. And we also ask you, O oh Lord, to be with uh, the hearts of all nations as they consider uh, giving aid at this time. Please, O oh Lord, your will be done so that these people may know you and the grace that you have to offer them. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world to give us life and grace. Amen. If there are no other announcements, let us join together in our closing hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, 922.